Hello, Reading Zone. This is Jamar J. Perry, author of the upcoming middle grade fantasy novel, Cameron Battle and the Hidden Kingdoms. And I'm so, so super excited for you all to be able to get your copies and to start reading it. Um, so Cameron Battle is, again, a middle grade fantasy novel um, that's starring a 12-year-old black boy named Cameron Battle who loses his parents way too early. Um, and so in the novel, he finds out that his parents have left him a book that has been passed down through the generations of their family. Um, one stormy night when he's um, at home, he's having a summer sleepover with his best friends, Aaliyah and Zion, um, and they convince him to go to his grandmother's attic where the book is being held. Um, when they read from the book, a magical portal opens and Cameron is sucked inside the book and he uh, finds out that everything that he read in the book is real. So from the fa fantastical magical country of Shadani to the gods and goddesses and to the queens and to the queen and her sister that rule um, this magical country. And so in the novel, Cameron Battle becomes the hero and he finds out that um, evil is lurking within the kingdom and he is the hero to save the people of this magical country. And so some of the key themes that are in the novel that I really wanted to explore um, was um, black boys becoming heroes. And so that was one of the biggest things that I wanted to explore because too often times we see black uh, boys in pathological lights, right? We see them either selling drugs, we see them on TV uh, being violent, we see them on TV um, getting in altercations with the police and things like that. And so what I really wanted to show was a young black boy who has a myriad of emotions um, and who becomes the hero of the story. So in the, in the novel, Cameron Battle, not only does he become the hero, but he learns how to do magic, he learns how to fight, he learns how to uh, become the best friend that he needs to become, he learns how to be a boy who learns how to handle his, handle, handles his emotions, and he also learns how to be a boy that shows his emotions, right? So in the novel, he learns that it's okay to cry, it's okay to show love to your best friends, it's okay to show love to your parents, and it's, it's okay to show love to people who show you love. And so the biggest thing for, for me for this novel was really showing um, black boys in a light that not only are they seen as real, um, real full human beings with potential, but they also can be heroes and they also can, and they also have magic and they also are joyous human beings as well too. So that's one of the biggest things that I want to show when I was writing this novel. Um, another thing that I wanted to really um, uh, showcase was. The, the way black black boys love each other, right? And so so often um, times that black boys are, are told that, you know, that they should be devoid of emotions. And we all know as human beings, that's not really true, right? We all have emotions. We all are happy. We all are sad. We're joyous. Um, we go through traumas. We go through struggles as well. And so in the novel, Cameron has a best friend named Zion. Um, and Zion shows Cameron that it's okay to, to love each other, right? It's okay to hug. It's okay to talk about your feelings and things like that. So those are two, some of the two, some, those are two of the biggest things that are in the novel that I really want to explore. One, black boys loving on each other, and then another one was black boys becoming heroes. So another big thing that is in the novel is the Igbo gods, right? And so uh, in the novel, Cameron Battle, again, finds this magical, uh, fantastical country that his parents have told him about. And so this 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 magical country um, is a locked away country. It's a hidden country that's located in West Africa. Um, and it's part of the Igbo ethnic group or the Igbo tribe, right? And the Igbo people have mythology and they have gods and they have goddesses and they have magical creatures. And Cameron comes in contact with all of them. And so what I really want to show with the Igbo gods is that is that mythology is not static, right? Mythology is something, mythology and myths are just stories that are passed down through generations through generations that really show people um, what it means to interact with the nature around them, right? And so I really want to showcase gods that were gods and goddesses who were not one-dimensional um, and that they had their own and that they had their own way of thinking and that they had their own um, reasons why they made it the reasons why they make the decisions that they make, right? And so in the novel, I, I, I want to explore, are the gods good people? 
are they bad people or are they people or or, or or are they neutral people and when human beings come in contact with the gods how do they react if there a bargain that struck is there um, something that they want you to do in return for asking them a favor? So I can't really, I, I can't wait till children really get to see how powerful the gods are, um, the bargains that they strike that, that, that they strike with Cameron, how Cameron um, himself be, how, how Cameron learns the magic of the gods and things like that. So I'm really excited for not only people to see Cameron interact with the gods, but I'm really excited for children to see gods that look like them, especially black children, right? And so we need our black children to not only see children that look like them who become heroes, we also need them to understand that they're powerful as well. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to include the gods in the story. Okay, so the section that I want to read from the novel is on page 14. Um, and in this section, um, Cameron, again, Cameron um, is a lonely, he's a lonely child. He's also a sad child because he's lost his parents. And in this section of the novel, his friends convince him to go to the attic for the first time and read from the book again. And we, all, and we know that when he, read from the, when he reads from the book, He's sucked into a, fan, a, a fantastical world where he has to become a magical hero. So let me read from that. She was correct. I had a right to see and read the book my mama had left me. The book was mine now that she was gone, but grandma had been trying to keep it from me. Still, there was no way we could get in the attic without a key, and grandma always had it with her, and I was not going to let Aaliyah pick the lock. You're right, I said, but first we need... I stopped talking as soon as I went to the bedroom door, Aaliyah following behind. Shining in blue light on the hallway floor was the key to the attic, its head encased in pink tape. Hmm, that doesn't make any sense, I said, picking it, up, picking it up from the floor. The blue light disappeared as I grasped it, making me think it was just a trick of the light, or lack of light, actually. It's the attic key. That, that didn't stop the fear, though. How did it get here? Did I just think it into existence? By this time, Zion had joined us, putting my thoughts to words. Um, Cam, how did the key get there? No clue, I whispered. Maybe Grandma dropped it on her way to her room? Aaliyah snatched it from me. We'll use the flashlight on my phone to see. Let's go. As we crept up the stairs to the attic, I couldn't shake the feeling that shivered up my skin. Why would the key be in the hallway? The last time I was able to look at the book was two years ago. Grandma and I had snuggled up on one of the worn sofas in the attic a few days after my parents had left, right after she had told me that they had died in a car crash and wouldn't be coming back. It was a night like this night, stormy and gray. Grandma read about Queen, Queen Ramallah, the main character in the book, and was showing me her picture when suddenly it glowed golden, and I could have sworn the pictures began to move. The queen's hair, which had been dark brown, started to turn gray before our very eyes. That's enough, Grandma had said, her voice choked in her throat as she slammed the book shut. We're done. She dragged me out of the attic, not even giving me a chance to protest, and locked the door behind us. She said, tears swimming in her eyes, don't ever come back up to this attic. You hear me? My own tears clogged in my throat. It was like I had lost my parents for the second time. But now, we tiptoed up the stairs to the third floor, defying her orders. When we got to the attic door, I put the key in and opened it. Oh, I just love that part of the novel because it really just shows that Cameron is about to go on an adventure. So again, my name is Jamar J. Perry, author of the upcoming novel, Cameron Battle in the Hidden Kingdoms. And I can't wait to readers get to read Cameron's story. Thank you. Bye-bye.